Okay, gonna wait. Uh, gonna wait to see who shows up. If anybody shows up, see if people show up. Waiting for an audience. I'm live. <sighs> oh, there's three people. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I, st I guess I'll. Oh, okay, there's 10 people. Okay, I guess I'll start talking. All right, so, I, okay, the reason why I'm doing, this is my normal, good evening. Hi, Ronald. Hi, hi, Rick. How are you? I'm so mad right now. <laughs> I, 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 I think, I, I, think I, I angered myself into a headache. I've had a headache ever since I listened to the Freedom Caucus this afternoon on, hey, Robert Roth, how are you? Ever since I listened to that press conference this afternoon with the Freedom Caucus, here's why I'm mad. Because they're 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 sitting on TV talking about why they want to do a clean repeal like we promised, and why don't we pass the same bill that we passed last year or whatever? That's fine. That's all well and good, but we all know that the reason I'm, I'm, I'm angry for I'm trying not to use the P word. I'm trying to say angry because, you know, it's not ladylike to use the P word in public. I, I'm, so I'm trying to say angry. <laughs> but I'm really the P word. I'm really mad. But the reason why I'm mad is a couple of things. OK, so they're going to um, Rand Paul and the Freedom Caucus is saying, why don't we just pass a clean repeal? Okay, and I get that, I understand that, but you can't, this is exactly why Republicans have this reputation for being uncaring and unfeeling. Like, they have all of their principles, hey, Christine, hey, Miss Babette, and I don't know if I'm going to get pushed back on this or get yelled at by uh, my Republican friends about this or not, but this is the way I feel, and I've always said this, that if you're going to repeal Obamacare, you cannot do it without a replacement, because there are people involved now like you can't just do that and you can't even just do it politically so what are you thinking like uh, how are you thinking that that's going to work out so the freedom caucus gets up there and has this news conference today and goes through all the minutiae um of the policy and the debt and and the this that and the other and whether or not it's, it's conservative enough People don't care about that. You know what they want to know? Am I going to lose my health care or not? That's what they want to know. They don't give a you-know-what about whether or not it's a conservative principle. Okay? They don't care about that. No, nor should they, frankly. So, I'm not a fan of the Affordable Care Act. I want to see it repealed, but I want to see it done the right way. And you, you're talking about, why don't we pass a, a clean bill? Why don't we pass a clean bill? And this is what really made me angry. Pass a clean bill, and then um, we can vote on all the proposals. Well, there's three flipping proposals out there. How are you going to get a majority? And then what happens if none of them pass? Because there's a whole strategy thing that they're trying to do what happens if none of them pass then all those people get screwed like this is this is this is what you guys do and I'm like I said I don't like the Affordable Care Act I think it did a lot of bad things but there are some people that benefited so write the stuff to take care of them like what <laughs> Write the, write the bill to take care of those people. I, I don't under... And this is the other reason why I'm irritated. <laughs> why I'm really annoyed with my party right now. You guys pass a repeal like 60 times. Okay? During the Obama administration. You passed the repeal 60 times and it was bogus. Because you knew he wouldn't sign it. So it was all politics. And believe me, I'm not naive. It's not that I didn't know that. But I at least thought that there was some relevance to the bills. Like, I at least thought that the replacements were, like, real replacements. Like, some a like an actual real 
bill, but it's pretty clear that it wasn't. Because they're still arguing over it. I mean, to me, the day Donald Trump got inaugurated, they should have had something on the table, ready to go. You voted to repeal 60 times. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Just had to get that off my chest. And then, like I said, you know, then the Freedom Caucus, which, if, if for anyone who doesn't know, who's looking at this and doesn't understand who the Freedom caucuses. So you have like your regular Republicans in Congress and then you have the Freedom Caucus. So they're like the right of the right of the right of the right, 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 right. They're like really super conservative. Um, and they're considered like the Republican hawks to make sure, you know, rhinos don't don't do anything crazy. Um, they're they're a little uh, they're just a little much. I don't. I don't like extremes. But that. That's. That's what they. And I don't disagree with some of the stuff that they were saying. What I disagreed with is that their meth is their methodology. They're not considering the people, and that's their job. Their job is not to just consider the methodology. It's not. And I, I didn't hear one of them say anything about. What would happen if they did a clean repeal and then and then they weren't able to decide on a new bill? Then what? Then if no bill gets... Then those people are just left hanging and you guys are good with that? I'm not good with that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not good with entitlements, but I'm sure as heck not good with, with just pulling the, the rug out from underneath people either. And I'm sure some of my Republican friends are going to be like, you sound like a tree-hugging Democrat, but that's it's not the point. It, it is damaging to the people, first and foremost, that, that actually did get help, because some people did. Um, but, uh, but, but to, to the... <laughs> you just sound cold. You sound like you don't care, and that's the problem. That's the problem that I have. I don't have a problem with the policy, but anytime you're 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 strategizing, like you're you're doing all this strategy, and I understand that. I understand the strategy. I understand the thinking. I get it. But you're not you're not thinking about how your strategy might affect people. So, like, what what are people supposed to do who like legitimately need that care? What are people who are Obamacare who are like in the middle of cancer treatment or something it's supposed to do while you guys are screwing around on your principle. So I'm just, I, I mean, yes, they are. The new bill does give options across state lines, but the Freedom Caucus doesn't want to pass the new one. Not conservative enough. It's Obamacare light. You're right, Robert. You're 100% right. And the new one, the new one does do that. The new one does a lot of things. Listen, it's a c complicated bill. But these, exactly, it creates competition. And, and we've been saying that for years, and the new, the new bill does that. I believe it's called the American Care Act. Does that. But, you know, the, the Freedom Caucus is basically planning on blocking this new bill. And it, it's really, I understand their reasons why, but they're just getting, uh, they're, they're doing their news conference and, and they're pontificating uh, uh, just about all, all these things that the average American could care less about. What they want to know is, am I still going to have my insurance when you people are done? And how much is it going to cost me? That's all they want to know. And all that policy stuff interests me. I understand it. I like it. All of us who are, you know, political junkies. But people who need doggone insurance don't want to hear that. And they shouldn't. I'm sticking to my conservative principles, so let's just do a clean repeal. Come on. <sighs> they messed around and gave me a headache. And, <laughs> and you know, I talk about this a lot on um, the Affordable Care Act probably once a week on Money Talk with Melanie because it's such a huge part of our economy. It's a huge part of everyone's economy. 
Um, and yes, it should be repealed in stages. Exactly. Because it's here now. It's, it's here now. So now what are you going to do? You're just not going to consider the people? No, we don't like it. But you're not, but you, you're just going to just do a clean repeal. And that's the problem when you get up there and do a news conference like that. And, and you're, you're all, all they're doing is just describing stupid stuff that people don't care about. They're, and and this, is, this is the disconnect that our politicians have between, you know, Joe Q. Citizen and, um, and, and, and Washington. I mean, for them to get up there and talk about a clean repeal, and then let's just... You, oh, absolutely. I will give you a call tomorrow, Robert. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I will definitely do that. Um, uh, hey, Christine. It, it should be repealed in stages. But, but for them to get up there and do that and not... Hey, Miss Demisha. Are you going to be happy with what I have to say now? For, the, for that, for those politicians to get up there and say that... And basically say, let's play roulette with what um, new care act, with what new health care bill is going to get passed, is wrong. I'm sorry. It just is. And it, it, stuff like that is exactly why, that stuff is exactly why people think Republicans are, are heartless, soulless monsters. Because of stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna get off my soapbox now. But I'm that just ugh! <laughs> that just made me so mad. I'm like, what are they talking about? Nobody cares about that. They want to know if they're gonna still have their health care and how much it's gonna cost. Period. I, I'm not. I haven't read the entire bill, Christine. Um, I did hear the talking points, and I'm you know always a little bit distracted by how cute Speaker, Speaker Ryan is, but. I I, <laughs> I did listen to him though while he was talking about what was in the bill. I, look, I, nobody's gonna be a hundred percent, a thousand percent happy with what's in the bill. I think the mandate's back in though, and um, if I'm not mistaken, expanded uh, Medicare is also still in there. But how is it not gonna be? How are you going to take it out? You're going to you're going to kick um, a whole bunch of elderly people and sick people off of expanded Medicare because of your your uh, your conservative ideology. I get it. I'm a conservative, but am I willing to like? Oh, I don't know. Take people out for it. <laughs> the mandate is horrible. And what I think they're going to do is give people choices, is what the plan is. So I hope the mandate is out. Um, I think they're planning on giving people some choices. But, I, you know, I, I, I just wasn't feeling, I wasn't feeling the reasoning um, exactly, a gradual appeal. I agree with you, Christine. That's why I just wasn't feeling the... Um, I just wasn't feeling what they were saying. And, and, and like I said, no one, it would have been very easy, in my opinion, to say, and if something were to happen, you know, where we couldn't agree upon a, a, a health care bill, then this is what we're going to do. X, Y, Z. But nobody, everybody was all about their, their principles and it being conservative enough. And that's not what conservatives do. And nobody cares about that. <laughs> Anywho, I just had to say that because I, I and I just hope that they hey bye Ronald. Why repeal? Just make improvements, right? Well, that's what Christina was saying. Um, thanks for hanging out, Ronald. Um, exactly, that's what Christine was saying. Like, why can't you do it gradually? What are you doing? That's the and see that's that's that that's that far right wing of the party. That's that's the problem. The problem with both parties are the fringe ends of the parties. That's the problem with both parties. That's the issue. 
And that that was the issue I had. And usually I kind of I like Rand Paul no, normally. He's I figured I think of him normally as kind of a reasonable person. I, people are probably laughing like, really, you just got that he's not reasonable. <laughs> but that was that was just completely unreasonable, and they're making my head hurt for real. <sighs> but I don't want to talk about that anymore. Uh, I, I, but I've had enough. But they, they need... Oh! I do have one more thing to say about that. What was in those bills y'all passed last year? Passed 60 bills last year. What was in them? Blank paper? Piles of blank sheets of paper? What was in them? 60 times. I mean, we knew it wasn't going to get signed. But... What was in... Those bills that you sent up that passed. Nothing. Clearly. Because you all should have had this worked out by now. And that's a daggone disgrace. It's disappointing. Call me naive. But it's disappointing to know that you guys kept sending that bill up there. And basically, just because you knew it was going to get vetoed... You didn't really do any work on it. That's basically what happened. They've had seven years. Exactly. And now we got both houses in the executive office. Office. And you guys got bupkis. And I, I, I'm pissed. <laughs> really? And then now they have something... And the Freedom Caucus is like, oh, well, it's not conservative enough. It's Obamacare light. It's, you know, why don't we do a clean repeal? Because, you know, screw the people who benefited from Obamacare. Thanks. That's helpful, but not really. Oh, uh, I truly hate it, too. I'm with you. I didn't get to keep my doctor. At all. I wasn't even on Obamacare and didn't get to keep my doctor. Thanks to Obamacare. I had darn, darn good insurance and didn't get to keep my doctor. So, please. But for, for them to... How about that, Christine? Uh, here's the other thing. Tax credits? What good does that do the average person? I know you're sick now, but we'll get you we'll get you like around tax filing time. Disconnect. Clueless. That is was making me angry. <laughs> angry. This is the best you guys came up with for real. Seven years. You've had this on your plate. Repeal and replace, repeal and replace. You were just talking smack. Empty words, and it's disappointing. That's my party. I mean, still better than the Liberal Party, I'm not going to lie, but I'm mad. Right. Exactly. Off the, mo off the money tree. It's exactly, Tamisha. I know. And that's what I mean. I was thinking of people, I was thinking of people like you when I said what I said about some people did benefit. So you're just going to screw those people over? And you're good with that? Playing Russian roulette and see which one passes? And 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 and, and every and the Congress is like totally splintered on all of them and, and you're just you're just going to screw around with people's insurance like that. Nah. I got. I have a problem with that. And if they have any intentions on keeping both houses in 2018, they better get their collective you-know-what together. Now that said, tomorrow on Money Talk with Melanie, I am going to have Glue Smith. Uh, she is my sister in the... She's my sister, my brown sister... And my sister in the Republican Party and the National Federation of Republican Women. Uh, she's on the executive board of the Florida Federation of Republican Women and uh, actually a um, former candidate for, for Congress. She's a total rock star. 
Very, I love glue too. Total rock star. Great lady. Love her. So I'm very excited that I have her on the show tomorrow. We're going to talk about the Trump bump and how to reposition ourselves in 2018. So I think that's going to be, uh, that's going to be a good time. She's fantastic. And that's who I'm going to have on the show tomorrow. If you, oh, tomorrow, 10.05 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, you'll be able to go to the Exceptional Conservative Show dot com. No, yes, the Exceptional Conservative Show dot com and click on Midday and you can listen there or you can come. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Misha. Um, or you can come to my Facebook page and listen to it Facebook Live. If you miss it, I always have a link to the podcast, so you can listen to the podcast later on. Um, and I usually tweet it, and it's on YouTube, it's on iTunes, I'm everywhere, you can't escape, no, but, <laughs> so, um, so you can listen to it after, hey Bill, if, if you miss the show, you can listen to it afterward. Speaking of missing the show and listening to it afterward, uh, on Monday, I had Patrick Barron, on the show, hey Jill Upson, how are you? <laughs> I had Patrick Barron on the show. Bye, thank good rant. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. I had to get that off my chest. It had been there for like a couple hours. <laughs> I was really up, but I had to go teach a class, and I couldn't, I couldn't, couldn't get it off my chest just yet. Hi, Larry. Um, so, speaking of missed shows, on Monday, if you missed the show, I had a uh, uh, economist, Patrick Barron, from the Mises Institute on the show, and he talked about six steps to a more sane, sane economy. Uh, step one being get rid of the Fed. Uh, it, so, it, it, it was a really good show, very interesting conversation, and if you would still like to listen to it, it is posted on my Facebook page, Money Talk with Mel, right now. Money Talk with Mel and A. <laughs> right now, it's posted on my Facebook page if you want to go ahead and click on it. Um, I believe that is all. I'm, do I'm done ranting for today. I'll probably talk about the ACA a little more in my opening tomorrow. But we got it. Republicans, we can't screw this up. For real. Like, real talk. We have all three branches. And we're about to have a Supreme Court if we don't screw it up. Let's get it right. Come on. Okay, I'm going to breathe, say some woosahs, and uh, listen to the great Ken McClinton, the exceptional one, who is on the Exceptional Conservative Show right now as we speak. If you click on, uh, go to exceptionalconservativeshow.com and click on uh, PM, you will see him there. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. Hi, Jason. Thanks for checking in. It's the end of the video, but you can look at it as soon as I click off. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Larry. I'll see everyone later. Bye-bye.